Ladies, we're gonna try this again. We're gonna try this again. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you to let this broadcast stay on. Let it stay on. <laughs> Lord, help my husband. Let this broadcast stay on, Lord. Whatever's going on <laughs> in the, with the internet, I ask you, Lord, to fix it. So we're gonna try this again, ladies. If I lose you again, um, uh, just be patient with me. I just wanna stay, get, stay on here for about 20 minutes at least. So I don't know what's wrong with my husband's phone over here. He keeps playing yeah, disco music. <laughs> Lord, I just thank you for every lady coming on. I thank you for every lady coming on. I just pray you bless them. Pray you strengthen them. We are so excited about her voice. It starts tonight. Many of you are on your way here if you're not already here. And then for those that are not here, I really want to encourage you to go to hervoicemovement.com and get the online ticket. You'll get to see all, every session. So, um, honey, you might want to step out with that, darling. I'm trying to find you. He's trying to find me when I'm not showing up. Let me, let me find y'all. Let me ask y'all if um, you could share the broadcast. Uh, we've been having trouble getting it to everyone to see it. And uh, I wonder if I'm on the right one. Am I on my personal? I think I'm on the right. Hey, ladies, let me know if I'm on my right Facebook. Let me know. We had so much trouble yesterday, and I got kicked off the first time this morning. So, can some of y'all let me know if I'm on my right one, the right one this morning? Karen D. Y'all are coming on pretty quick. Can someone say, yes, Pastor Kelly, you're on the right one this morning. Carol... Lunsford, good morning, Carol. Amber, good morning. I'm on my regular. Okay, well, that's good. I'm on the right one then, honey. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, no, oh, well, I'm on Calship Gray. That's Calship Official. Uh huh. Is that the one I'm on? Okay, that's the right one. All right, good morning, ladies. We did it. We're on the right one. In Jesus' name, we're going to keep our signal. I've never had trouble getting signal out here. It is a little bit weaker, and sometimes they say it gets sketchy. But uh, thank you, Jesus. We're on this morning. What an honor it is to pray. What an honor it is to seek the face of the Lord. What an honor it is to do the work of the Lord. What an honor it is. And so, Lord, we just thank you for another day to worship you. We thank you for our collective prayer with all of these ladies and for times of corporate prayer, whether it be through the internet or at church or in prayer meetings. We thank you for the opportunity to have private prayer where we intercede. And ladies, I really wanna encourage you when you get off of these prayer casts, just have a time of private prayer. Grow your private prayer time. This is really an opportunity for us to believe together and pray together and model prayer and hear the voice of the Lord. But it's also a time for us to learn how to develop our private prayer life. The time with just you and the Lord and the intimacy that you have with the Father. So, Lord, I just thank you for intimacy. Um, that we will know intimacy on another level, that we will know your presence and your power on another level, that we will hear your voice and there won't be any other voice that we attend to, that we will walk by faith and not by sight, that we will walk by the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray, God, that you bless every woman on this broadcast this morning on July 13th. And I just thank you, God, that this is a blessed day this is a Holy Ghost field day. This is a day where we hear the voice of the Lord. We attend to the voice of the Lord. And there's no other voice that we listen to. I thank you, God, for women that are praying, that are fasting, that are seeking your face. 
I thank you, Lord, that you're leading us into times of refreshing. I thank you, Lord, into, into times where your spirit just flows freely, God, that, that we are becoming a place where you dwell, not just a place where you visit, but that our actual bodies are a place where you dwell and the spirit of God is free to move and speak and give us revelatory knowledge and to give us eyes to see and ears to hear that we are a habitation of the Lord. I prophesy that you're a habitation of the Lord. I prophesy that I'm a habitation of the Lord, that we actually hear the voice of the Lord. We actually, the presence of God is moving in our lives in power and might. The presence of God is, is just uh, dwelling in our mortal bodies. And we've so yielded our lives. We've so yielded our lives to the presence of God that God can speak to us anything and we will do it. God can speak anything and we will obey it. Lord, I just thank you. For Psalms uh, 68 and 11, the warring women of Zion delivered the message. And uh, we delivered the message of the gospel. We delivered the message of hope. We delivered the message of freedom. We delivered the message. We, uh, I thank you, Lord, that the warring uh, women of Zion destroyed, destroyed by the power, through prayer and fasting, through prayer and fasting, the conquering legions, that our enemies have no foothold in our lives. They have no place in our lives. They have no residence in our territories. The conquering legions are destroyed through our commitment, through our consecration of prayer and fasting. And we thank you, Lord, that, that the warring women of Zion are left to gather the spoil, gather the harvest of souls, gather the finances, gather the wisdom, gather the revelation, gather the abundance because of our obedience obedience to the Holy Spirit. This is a time where Psalm 68 and 11 is actually becoming the war cry uh, of, of women across America, the war cry of godly women across the earth. It is time for the godly woman. This is your time, your season, and your era to take up, to take up your cross and follow the Lord, to take up your cross and follow the Lord. Isaiah 68 and 11 said the warring women of Zion delivered the message, delivered its message, our message of hope, our message of the gospel, our message of freedom, our message of love, our message of sold out to Jesus, our message of righteousness and holiness and purity, that we, that we through prayer and fasting, see, we don't fight the enemy in our flesh. We pray, we fast, and the Holy Spirit the, the Holy Spirit, as we pray and fast, begins to summon angels and they fight our battles in the heavenly. So in the heavenly, so the conquering legions are dismantled and destroyed. Our enemies are destroyed through our consecration, through our sold out hearts. The conquering legions dismantle literally right in front of our face, right in front of our face. And then we are left to gather the spoil, to gather the spoil, to gather the heart harvest. And I just thank you, Lord, that you are sending gathering angels all across this nation. I see gathering angels come coming from the north, south, east, and west. I see them lined up on every state. They've hit the borders of of all of the of the United States of America, from the East Coast all across the Eastern Seaboard to the West Coast all across across the Western Seaboard, from the North to the South, from Canada all the way to Mexico. I thank you for the middle of America, Texas, all across this great land. I see angels. They're coming by the millions, coming by the millions. The gathering angels, the prosperity angels, the salvation angels, uh, the the miracle work in angels, uh, I, the, announcing a time of revival. Lord, I just thank you that these angels are coming. And as we pray, as we pray, travesty will be averted. As we pray and fast, God will move in power and might. As we pray and fast and seek God, we will see the greatest awakening, the greatest revival, the greatest transformation, the greatest redemption over a nation and over the world that has ever been seen. These are going to be the greatest days of revival that history will ever bear out. I truly believe that we are entering into the third great awakening. 
I truly believe that the sleeping giant of the church has arisen in prayer and in fasting. I truly believe that our eyes have been opened and God has given us eyes that are totally stayed on him, totally lost in his gaze, that we are no longer going to be drawn away by our own lust. See, sin when it's conceived, it comes from your own lust. Sin when conceived, is you're drawn away by your own lust. But God is so cleansing the church. He's so cleansing our hearts that we will no longer be drawn away by our own lust. But the Spirit of God inside of us, the power of God inside of us is so big. The Spirit is so big that the temper, that the things in our life, the fleshly things in our life have been tempered by the Holy Ghost, have been tempered. And some have been completely, you know, you're going to always have hunger. You're going to always have certain things that your body wants, but they will be tempered by the Holy Ghost. They will be submitted to God. They will be submitted to to, to the voice of God. And all God says is, he says, I just want you to love me first. He, it's okay to want to build a business. It's okay to want to take a vacation. It's okay to enjoy your family. So it's, it's great to love your husband. It's great to want to have a wonderful meal. There's all kinds of things that God has given us that are gifts, but when they become our our God, then they're unholy. Now suddenly they're perverted. Now suddenly it's not right anymore because G there's only one place. There's only there's only one throne, and it's and it's Jesus's throne. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And and when we make Him the Lord of our lives, He must be first. He must. We must love our husbands through our love for God. We must love our children through our love for God. We must love mankind, our ministries, our businesses through our love for God. We must love everything, that the beautiful things that God has given us through our love for God. And we must hold everything loosely because everything is the Lord's. Lord, everything of mine is yours. My home, my, my, my husband, my children, my hopes, my dreams, my health, my, my desires, our, our desire to see uh, all of your plans and purposes and will done in our lives, everything that you're doing in our spiritual children's lives and our in our natural children's lives, all of them rest in you. Everything that's going to happen in her voice this week, Lord, we submit her voice to you. We submit every part of her voice. We submit from the time people get into the parking lots, on the shuttle buses, as they walk onto the grounds. We submit every minute to you. We ask you, God, to let your spirit flow in power and might. We plead the blood of Jesus over these grounds. We plead the blood of Jesus over every worker we plead the blood of Jesus over every volunteer. We plead the blood of Jesus over every servant of the Lord, every servant of the Lord, every woman that walks on, every child that happens to be here, every young person, everyone that's given their heart and their lives to do the work of God. We plead the blood of Jesus over the men that are here to help. We plead the blood of Jesus over every speaker, every altar worker, everyone that's praying for someone, everyone that's working the merch. We plead the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that the glory of the Lord is going to fall in this place like we have never seen in our lifetime. We will talk about this for decades, what you did in 2022. 2022 was filled with all kinds of power, anointing, and major breakthrough. And we just give you the praise and the glory and the honor. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you. I just give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I, Lord, all my hope is in you. All my strength is in you. Everything you've ever called us to be or to walk in is in is at the feet of Jesus. Remember, everything that God has for you is at his feet. Oh, wow. I just saw myself sitting at the feet of Jesus and I saw him handing me gifts. I saw him handing me blueprints. I saw him touching my children. As I'm sitting at his feet, he's healing one of my kids. As I'm sitting at his feet, he's moving in another part of the world. As I'm sitting at his feet, he's, he's blessing my husband. As I'm sitting at his feet, he's blessing her voice. As I'm sitting at his feet, he's moving for our business and for our ministry and for everything we've been called to do. As we sit 
at his feet. As we sit at his feet, and God, I just thank you that you're giving all of us a greater desire to sit at your feet, to sit at your feet, to muse upon you, to love you, to worship you in spirit and in truth, in spirit and in truth. I'm going to ask my husband to come and let's do communion. I, I want to get communion done just in case something happens with this internet. I don't want to wait. So I'm going to ask my husband to come. Thank you, Jesus. And then I'll come back and pray more if we, if we're on. All right. Let's get your communion. We're here to remember and be thankful. Remember and be thankful. So, Lord, we just... Yeah. Remember the extravagant, very high price you were willing to pay for us. The suffering and pain and shame that you took that was ours. Your willingness, your love that drew salvation's plan. Lord Jesus, we thank you for such great compassion and love beyond our understanding. But Lord, we want to know it more. We want to know your love more. So <coughs> but we want to remember and be thankful not only for the great love you have for us, but also all the things that you accomplished that day for us. Yes, Lord. So we might walk in freedom. We might walk connected to our Father God, living by empowered by your Spirit to be a son and daughter of God, to look like God, to act yes. like God, to be connected to the family. We are not only loved, but we are wanted by God. We are wanted. He wants a relationship. He didn't just save us to forgive us of our sins. He saved us to have a relationship with him because he wants sons and daughters, mature sons and daughters that know him intimately. Yes. So, Lord, we thank you for all that you did on the cross, and all that you accomplished, and all the pain and suffering that you were willing to go through. So, Lord, we just remember your body today. We take your body. We declare it by your wounds and stripes. We are healed. We are now healed. It's a it's a done fact in your mind. So we just declare our healing over our own body and the bodies of our friends and our family right now. Command sickness to go, pain to go. All anxiety and fear has to go in Jesus' name. We thank you for your blood that paid the price for the new covenant, for our forgiveness, for our righteousness. We thank your blood covers our sins, makes us right with God. Yes. We have a place at the table. We belong. We have a place where we belong. It's at the table of the Lord with the family of God. One quick thought today. Uh, Romans chapter 6 and Romans chapter 12 talk about that we need to offer the members of our body to the Lord as instruments of righteousness. And that Romans 12 says, in light of all that Jesus did and accomplished, that we should offer up the members of our body as a living sacrifice, uh, a holy form of worship, which is our reasonable you know, form of worship, to offer up our lives, our, the, everything that we are as an instrument to the Lord so that we can live out the good, perfect will of God, be transformed in our minds and our souls so that we can live out the good will of God. So it's offering up every part of ourself. Yes. We offer up our body, we offer up our soul. We transform it. We, we get rid of all the lies and all the culture that doesn't agree with heaven so that we can live out the perfect will of God. Yes, Lord. But I want you to do that this morning. We just, Lord, we know that this, yes. this life, yes. the problem with a lot of Christianity is we try to live out Christianity by our own strength, our own wisdom, yeah. you know, trying to live it out by our own reasoning, yes. our own abilities, but it's never was meant yes. to be that way. It was, it began supernaturally by our rebirth and a yes. reconnection to God in our spirit, and yes. it continues day by day supernatural walk yes. and the goal is Christ living his life in us and yes. through us and so Lord yes. we want our feet to be we want you to walk through our feet today through the doors yes. 
yeah. of the houses yes. and walk in. We want our hands reaching out yes. you to reach through our hands and yes. touch people. We want you to speak through our mouth today. We want our thoughts, your, you to think your thoughts in us today. We want to see with your eyes today. So we give you our eyes. We give you our mind and our thoughts. We give you our hands and our feet. Yes, and we Lord. just surrender and we, yes. <clears throat> we declare Christ in us will yes. come forth and manifest Christ in us and through us and around us today. Yes, Lord. Christ be seen in us. That's the goal, Lord Jesus, that not only we become so one with you that Christ be seen in us and through us and what we do and what we say you, you you take control and possession of us completely we willingly surrender our bodies our minds our thoughts our day yeah. we, we're no longer have any kind of ownership idea of our own body and our own mind yes Lord. but we realize that we've been bought with the price of the blood of Jesus yes, and we no longer belong to ourselves yes and that includes everything about us our, our bank accounts don't belong to us anymore our family doesn't belong to us our bodies don't belong to us. That means everything we do with our body doesn't. It's not all our choice. It's God's choice. So the idea of it's all about me and my body is not biblical. It's not my body. It's the Lord's. The body is a temple. Uh, the, the scripture declares our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, meaning it belongs to him. He lives there. He dwells there. So, Lord, we just pray today yes. that we would get this, that we would surrender yes, Lord. daily. Yes. And, Lord, we just pray you come in and fully possess yes. us, fill us full of the Holy Spirit so that everything we do and say that you're doing it through us, Christ in us. So we yield to that. We It becomes not about better discipline or mental gymnastics, but it becomes more about yielding more. So, Lord Jesus, we, we surrender more to you today we yield more to you today we obey more to you of what you want us to do today your promptings your your word your truth and we walk in the power and empowered by the spirit to do what we cannot do and we step out knowing that we can't do it but we believe you're going to do it in us you're going to love through us you're going to be patient through us you're going to have your peace is going to overcome our reasoning and our, and our rationale and our worries and fears, we're going to let your peace yes. manifest through us. Instead, we choose that. We choose peace. We choose joy today. We choose to walk in love today, in patience today. We choose to yield to that spirit of Christ in us that will cause that to happen. We're not going to manufacture our own peace, no. but we're going to yield to the peace of God in us. We're going to yield to the love of God in us. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for those things. And we're going to keep that in our focus today. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Bob. What an honor it is to take communion today. What an honor it is to take communion today. And I just thank you, Lord, for the great communion revival. I thank you, Lord, for men and women that love you, Lord, for the church in America and across the world. But we'll begin to realize the importance of taking communion if possible, every day to remember what you did on Calvary, to remember the sacrifice you made, to walk in the beauty that we, I love what Pastor Bob said, Romans 12 says, we are living sacrifices. So God, I just thank you that we, everyone on this broadcast is a living sacrifice. We are a living sacrifice and God, let our lives literally emulate the glory of the Lord. Let our lives be nothing but temples where your glory and your presence and your power can flow through. I thank you that many of you are being healed today. If you need a physical healing in your body today, God is healing you. If you need prosperity, you need finances. Listen, he owns the cattle of a thousand hills. He's providing monies and finances. If you need wisdom to solve a problem or you need the power of God uh, to dismantle an attack of the enemy or, or a strategy of the devil, our God has all of it right there 
in the palm of his hand. So, Lord, we just thank you. We receive your blessing. We thank you for healing us. We thank you for delivering us. We thank you for setting us free. We stand in faith that everything you've called us to do, we will we will do with, with power and with love, and we will see the salvation of the Lord. We will see the blessing of the Lord. We will see the wisdom of God in Jesus' name. I love you so much. I cannot wait to see you tonight at Her Voice. It's real early here in the Northwest. When I come here, uh, I, I start really, really appreciating all of you folks from the Northwest who get up so early every morning to pray with me and uh, but we will see you tonight it's our first night cannot wait to see you and then tomorrow morning i may have different ones help me with the broadcast in the morning so you may see some people with me in the morning uh thursday and friday i love you so much i want to ask you if all 200 of you will share the broadcast and invite someone in to pray with us uh, a lot of people will get to get to benefit from the prayers and from our corporate prayer. I love you so much, and we will see you in the morning. God bless.